Hey guys, I'm Rick and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. I've been talking about it for a couple of videos now and I'm proud to show you my, my under $100 gaming PC build. It's built all of used parts and we're going to be going over the parts list and how much I paid for these parts uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, just to tell you, what we're aiming at is a gaming PC that will play most of today's titles and obviously we're going to hope to we're going to aim around for medium settings we're not going to be aiming for high or very high although i will test it if it seems like the game can pull it off but with the parts we have here i'm hoping to play at least i'd say 80 percent of today's uh, big titles and be able to pull off like i said medium settings if we manage that for under 100 bucks i think i'm going to call this build a success so we're going to put it together and we are going to see if that's going to work but just before that, like I said, let's go over the part list. Now these are all parts that I bought myself used, and the prices are gonna get, I'm gonna give you are the real prices I paid for these parts. Of course, it took me about two months to get all these parts together so that it would fit under a hundred dollars. However, if you deal, if you get people that know what they're selling and that today what the actual value of the parts are, you'll be able to pull off a build like this no problem. So. To begin with, power supply, we got nothing fancy. I got a generic power supply from a, a computer store. They let me dig around their back store and basically pull it from a system. It's a 600 watt ATX power supply. I paid $5 for it. Um, there's actually only one PCI Express uh, connector on it. However, I we are gonna throw in a basically SATA to PCI Express converter to be able to power our graphics card. So even that's fit in the budget. This was a dollar on eBay. So no problem there. So $5 and $6 for the adapt and one extra dollar. So bringing up to $6 for the adapter. For the graphics card, we've got a Zoltac GTX 460. It's an old card, but it's a mid-range old card. It should give us at least basic FPS on medium for most of today's games. It's a steal. I got this for $15. So 15 to 20 should be what you're gonna pay for an old card like this. If you get someone who actually realizes that even though back in the day, he, he might've paid two to $300 for it. Today, it's worth 15 to $20. So this is gonna be the heart of our build. We're gonna hope that this keeps up. If we move on to the motherboard and CPU, I, this I actually switched at the last second because I, because I found a crazy deal. Originally, we were gonna go with a Atlon X4. However, at the last second, I couldn't resist. I, got, I found this deal, it was $40 for a G3258 Intel Pentium processor combined with the motherboard, which is an H81MA from Asus. So basically the guy sold it to me for $40 for both parts together. And he threw in uh, some DDR3 RAM, which is only 1066, uh, but it's four gigs and he threw them in for five bucks. So $45, I got a motherboard, CPU and a RAM combo. Four gigs is not what I would have liked, but with RAM prices today, I really couldn't swing a eight gig uh, set in uh, you know in this build, and I would have to wait longer to try and find an eight gig set that would fit in the price. And I'm actually not sure I would actually manage it because you know RAM prices are crazy right now. But this should be able to at least give us some decent gaming performance. Like I said, if we go to low or medium settings. After that. Hard drive, nothing fancy. A Western Digital Blue 250 gigabyte drive that I got for five bucks. So basically, you know, this will be enough for our operating system, a couple of games. You might have to swap games if you wanna have like four or five games installed on your hard drive at the same time. But with the price we're at, you can always throw in an extra five or 10 bucks and get a second hard drive or a bigger hard drive, you know, whatever you can find used that it comes from a good manufacturer. And lastly, since we are going to try and overclock the 3258, because that is a unlocked overclockable CPU, 
We, I threw in a Deep Cool uh, Ice Edge Mini for $15 because it fit in the build. Why not? And actually, I had bought a used uh, Evo 212, but unfortunately, none of the cases I could find or budget cases I could find could actually support the cooler. So I went and got an Ice Edge Mini for $15, which fits perfectly in the build in the budget and should give us at least basic overclocking abilities. And lastly, we have the case, an old HP case that has uh, that supports eight, uh, mini ITX, uh, sorry, micro ITX, and basically um, got this for five bucks. Uh, pulled it apart. I cleared out the front because the front panel had a lot of uh, useless stuff on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually jerry rig a fan here at the uh, at the front at the back. And the only thing you don't see on the table is the fans. Uh, five dollars. I have a 140 and a 120 millimeter fan that I pulled from a Corsair case. So they're the base Corsair fans that they give with their cases. It's not top of the end, but it'll do the job. And lastly, we have a flat fan splitter that I got on eBay as well for 50 cents. So budget is up there on the right. As you can see, we're well under the hundred dollar mark. So we could even squeeze in a few extra goodies. So anyone shopping around should be able to easily hit this kind of build for under a hundred dollars. But like I said, it will take a lot of wheeling and dealing. So let's put this PC together, enjoy the time lapse, and then we'll see each other again after for the benchmarks.
Hey guys, I hope you like the time lapse. So before we go look at the benchmarks, which is what we're here for uh, at the conclusion, we're gonna just, I just wanna address one quick issue. Uh, as you can see from my haircut and the setting around, a couple of days have actually passed since I did the first part of the video. And I just wanna say that I'm disappointed with the quality of the intro section. It was actually the first time I was shooting an intro section in my workshop downstairs. And I'm really disappointed with the way the lighting turned out in the final video. Problem is the build was already done by the time I was editing the video and I realized how poor I found the quality. So I couldn't reshoot the intro section because the parts were already in the build and I wasn't gonna take it apart just to reshoot the intro. So I hope you guys forgive me for the low quality. I won't be shooting uh, you know, intro sections or, or sections where I speak anymore in my workshop till I have a better lighting equipment so that I can actually shoot down there. So we're up here where there's a lot of natural lighting. Should help us a lot. Quality should be much better for the conclusion now. So let's get to it. Number one, let's just be realistic. We're building a $100 computer. We weren't expecting it to smash all the scores. However, um, you know, I am a little bit disappointed with the results, but we'll go through them together and you'll see why. Uh, so there's good news and there's bad news. Let's start with the bad news. There are actually three games that I run my benchmarks on that were unplayable. Uh, one actually didn't start at all, which was Titanfall 2. Uh, I think it's mostly due to a VRAM issue because this card, the GTX 460, although it's a pretty decent card, a question of performance, it really suffers from low VRAM. It's 768 megabytes. We weren't even hitting the one gig yet back then. There are versions of the 460 that do have one gigabyte, but the one I have is a 768 megabytes. So that is probably why uh, we're getting the poor quality, where, where the game is not starting. I'd have to test it out though with a better graphics card, and if that doesn't start it, we'd have to test it. Maybe it's the actual RAM, because we only have four gigabytes. It's perhaps limited to eight gigabytes minimum. I don't think it's the CPU because the CPU, although it's not the best thing ever, it's not old enough probably to be at the point where games are not actually starting. Uh, number two, uh, we have uh, Doom and we have uh, Star Wars Battlegrounds. The game started, but they were such stuttery messes that I haven't included the results in the benchmarks because they were they were basically unplayable. Like it, it, they were so stuttery that you couldn't even, uh, you know, start to complete one like at the first stage, even on a campaign mode in Star Wars Battlegrounds. You couldn't even move your character around. It was so stuttery. So we were just disregarding those games. But just to let you guys know, this computer will not run games that demand that much from it. And like I said, in my opinion, it's just a graphics card. It's a VRAM issue. So if you put an extra 10 to 15 bucks and you go get like a 560 Ti or a 660 Ti, you'll actually be able probably to play those games no problem with the same setup, but we'd be over our $100 price point. However, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm gonna do a second part where we're actually gonna test that out. Is it the video card or is it the RAM? And I'm gonna come to you back with the results in a separate video. Can't promise you it's gonna be the next one because I have a lot of other things planned, but it's coming up. So let's get to the results. First of all, let's look at the overclocks we managed. On the CPU, which is base clocked at 3.2 uh, uh, gigahertz, we managed to get 4.3, which is pretty decent with a cheapo $15 cooler. And we're actually gonna be testing this cooler for performance in a future video as well, but I'm pretty happy with the 4.3 gigahertz we got. Uh, for the video card, the 460 actually overclocks really well. The base uh, clock on the core is 675 megahertz, and we managed to push it all the way to 875 megahertz. It's a 200 megahertz boost, which is almost 25% of the base clock. Uh, and for the memory, we went from 1800 to 2200 megahertz, which is, like I said, percentage-wise, really big boosts for this type of card. Now we're going to get to the actual benchmark results. First, let's start with Cinebench. On the multi-threaded score, and you'll see it up there, we got 20, 322. Nothing special, but not god-awful. So you know that the CPU has 
decent performance for a dual core CPU. No hyper treading, so we weren't expecting a, a monster score anyway. Uh, for Fire Strike, we got a final score of 2743, which is a graphics score of 3067 combined to a physics score of 4463 which is honestly pretty decent for the setup we're working with today. Now, the most important section, the games. So these are the games that ran very well on the system. And basically, in the end, what we wound up with, honestly, is a the perfect MOBA pot potato. You know, it, it's, a, it's a term people throw out there. It's you build a rig for people that play only MOBAs. This is an excellent build, and you're not even paying $100. So if you're playing League of Legends and you're having trouble running it because you're on a laptop or something like that, for under 100 bucks, you can get a rig that's going to run it at with a like 144 hertz monitor, pr push it pretty close to the limit. Because as you can see, I did tests on high settings, but if we lower it a little bit, you'll be getting excellent results. So let's look at it. The results should be up there in the corner. First of all, we, we tested Dirt 3 racing game and we used uh, high settings on high settings we got an average of 107 frames per second minimum of 89 very good results and we're on high settings so at the beginning of the video i said i'd be aiming lower medium settings and this game on high we were getting decent results so why not if you're playing with 144 hertz monitor you lower to medium you'll be maxing out your monitor almost uh, for league of legends we tested it on ultra high, the maximum setting. We were getting an average of 147 frames per second. So like I was saying earlier, it's a perfect computer for that. However, we did get lows of 53. I'll be honest though, I believe it was due to a, a lag issue during the game I was playing that I got the scores from. And unfortunately, the server that day was lagging for each and every game. So I was always getting similar results, even though I tried to run the test two or three times. But... You know, it was really during lag moments that I, I got these lows of 53. And 53 is not often awful for ultra high. Because like I said, if you set it to medium, you're going to be rolling at over 200 frames per second and probably minimums of like 80 to 90. Uh, for Overwatch, we actually were able to play Overwatch on this with pretty decent. Uh, we had to put low settings, but we still got an average of 59 frames per second and a low of 48. So if you're playing competitive Overwatch, like serious competitive, maybe not on this rig, but if you're playing Overwatch for fun and you know you can deal with 48 minimum, which is almost you know almost not visibly noticeable between 60 FPS, uh, you're probably going to be doing pretty decent with the, with this computer. And finally, uh, for people playing CS:GO, I even popped out the old CS:GO. We were getting averages of 102 frames per second with lows of 65. So once again, pretty decent scores. And that was for medium to high settings. Uh, anyway, if you look at the graph up there, I, I put next to it in, in parentheses what we, were, what we were running the games at. Because like I said, I was taking settings that I would choose to play these games at. And for CSGO, so if, even if you drop down the settings a little bit, uh, you'll be getting easily like lows of 80 to 90 frames per, per second. So in the end, for under 100 bucks, we've got the perfect, you know, gaming potato for someone who plays MOBAs. So I hope you guys like this build. Honestly, it shows to you that you don't need to have a lot of money to get a, a, an up and running gaming computer. If you're not expecting to play the AAA titles of the year you're actually in. And like I said, in my opinion, with an investment of maybe a max of like $50 extra, you could probably get this rig up and running playing those AAA titles. Like I said, maybe investment in a graphics card, investment in a little bit better RAM, like eight gigabytes instead of four, and you'll probably be running anything and you'll be getting you know even higher results. And like I said, we'll be looking at that in a separate video. So I hope you guys liked the video today. Honestly, comments and likes really help I'm trying to build a channel. As you see, I'm investing every time you see me. I pretty much have something new. Like I just invested in this new work table so that I won't have, you know, so that I'll be able to have a better workspace and it'll be easier to shoot things for you guys. So, you know, 
the likes, the views really help a lot so that I can grow the channel and come back with better content and actually invest more to be able to get you know, more current issues than building used computers. Although I really like doing this because it shows to you that you don't need to be, you don't need to have a lot of cash to be able to play with a, you know, for computer gaming. Uh, so I hope you guys, like I said, appreciate the video. Likes are appreciated. Uh, subscriptions are even better. And I'll see you guys in my next video. We're gonna be working, I'll actually give you a hint. We'll be building a test bench for my for my studio. So we're going to be doing a homemade test bench from a old computer case. So stay tuned for that one. It should be coming up in the next few days. Hopefully, it's not going to take two weeks like this one. And you know, thank you for watching as always. See you guys next time.